The world of mobile technology is one of the fiercest competitive markets ever. In the quest to stand out from the pack, some companies make bold moves and succeed brilliantly. Others are more meek and fade into the unexceptional background. Still others fill the space between, innovating once and then endlessly iterating over and over again. Then there are those that just screw it all up, thanks to choices that are either too bold, too meek, or just plain old absolutely insane. These are the products that fall flat on their face. They're not to be mocked, but the lessons they teach should certainly be remembered. And that's why we're here. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is episode three of Worst Gadgets Ever, featuring the LG Intuition, AKA the Optimus View. We usually don't do worst ever episodes on devices still offered for sale, but we made an exception in this case. Not to bash LG, but more so to show how far it's come in such a short time. We're no stranger to the Optimus View. Our own Brendan Miniman unboxed its Verizon variant, the LG Intuition, and rendered his first impressions six months ago. It started like this. Whoa, this thing is huge. This thing is monstrous. Is this really a phone? This is a joke. And things never really got better from there. Here's the deal with the Optimus View. It was the first attempt by a mainstream manufacturer to compete with Samsung's Galaxy Note series of smartphone-tablet hybrids. But where Samsung maintained the classic dimensions of a smartphone when scaling up, LG didn't. With its 4 to 3 aspect ratio, the Optimus View looks a lot more like a roof shingle or a coaster than a smartphone. Awkward is the word of the day when it comes to the view. It's awkward to hold, it's awkward to talk on, it's awkward to adjust the screen ratio every time you open an app. It's even awkward to charge because of the top-mounted and recessed USB port. The thing is just too weird to use properly. The View probably would have done better if it had been marketed as a mini tablet. Using the View in public, we were struck by how many double takes we didn't get because this thing actually looks like a tablet in the hand because you're obscuring the bottom half of it with your palms. And as a tablet, its hardware really isn't too bad. The wide 5-inch screen allows for a spacious software keyboard, and its IPS LCD panel actually looks quite nice. The wide body also gives you more icon room in the dock, and the bonus of having both a multitasking button and a menu button in the capacitive row down below. But these slight advantages aren't enough to overcome the sheer clumsiness of a device shaped more like a cocktail napkin than a phone. That's our first takeaway from the Optimus View, and it's a familiar one. Bold choices are good, but being different just for the sake of being different just doesn't work. We know LG can build solid phablet hardware. We see it in the Optimus G Pro, and we're glad to see the company's more conventional efforts. In fact, that's what the view should have been. In the future, when pants are designed differently, you might be able to fit this in your pockets later, but you can't comfortably fit it in your pocket now. Unfortunately, it doesn't get much better on the software side. While we enjoy LG's custom skin on other devices, like the Optimus G, we primarily enjoy it on those phones because it's responsive. That's not the case on the Intuition we've got here. Despite the normally speedy dual-core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4, the interface lags, sometimes badly. Closing any app usually means we're waiting, sometimes a while, for the home screen to reload. Once in a while, that's not too bad but it happens quite often on the Intuition, and we're not sure why. There's also the question of the stylus features. LG has built in a hardware button so you can jump right into Quick Memo. That's a feature that's much easier to use with a stylus than with a fingertip, and LG has included one in the box, but it's a capacitive stylus. It reminds us of the Samsung C Pen, which we hated, but we might have been able to live with that if it had somewhere to live on the device. Sadly, it doesn't. There's no silo on the Optimus View, so you need to carry the stylus separately. That's ridiculous. And it brings us to our second takeaway. Don't integrate half-baked features. If you're gonna provide stylus support, make sure it's more than just a capacitive pen, and make sure it can slot neatly into the device. And while we're talking takeaways and software, let's jump right into number three. Support your phones properly after release. 
We've only seen one software update for the intuition so far. Not to bring Jelly Bean or anything good like that, but primarily to rearrange the bloatware you didn't want on the phone in the first place. And that update hasn't exactly been getting the best reviews from users, with some reporting that the update trashed their camera, calendar, and email apps. Nice. We could talk about the awful, raspy speakerphone or the subpar battery life, but let's stop there. The view and the intuition aren't entirely worthless. There are some folks out there who obviously really value this device, usually due to tablet-centric features like e-reading or web browsing, both of which the phone does quite nicely. But it hasn't been marketed or positioned properly by LG, and it's been practically ignored by Verizon for the duration of the time it's been offered. It feels like this was a hobby project inside LG. Someone thought, how can we differentiate ourselves? And the company decided to do it via form factor. But then somebody else had a better idea in the Optimus G and Optimus G Pro, and the View, View 2, and Intuition were relegated to the red-headed stepchild status that maybe they always deserved. This phone, like any device, has its small following of hardcore fans, and as a mini tablet, once again, it does okay. But despite the bones we try to throw it, on the whole, we think it's a bold experiment that ultimately failed. An experiment that the rest of the industry can hopefully learn from, and which LG already looks to be correcting. We're much more excited about the company's future products than its past ones. That is, as long as there's no View 3 on the horizon. That's going to do it for episode 3 of Worst Gadgets Ever. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, throw us a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have something to say. Follow us on our various social media channels. Subscribe here on YouTube, and stay tuned for more. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.